Good morning, Phoenix Nation. Well, fourth grade from Phoenix Nation. Mr. Harris here. Just wanted to check in on you guys. Um, and make sure everything's all right. Uh, I know that it's a little confusing what's going on, but we're going to be transitioning into online teaching. Um, this YouTube channel will serve as our base or our hub for our lessons going forward um, until they say we get back to Hampton. Um, obviously, this won't replace seeing you guys, all, seeing all of you guys in my classroom, uh, being able to interact one on one. But we have Class Dojo, we have Study Island, we have YouTube now. Um, those would be our kind of combination for making sure that you guys are getting all the essentials that you need in order to master the fourth grade still, because that's still our goal at the end of the year. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going over this close reading document. Um, I'm going to read it to you guys, go through it, break it down exactly how you guys would break it down, exactly how we've been practicing it since August. Um, and then I'm going to answer a few questions and then you guys can jump onto Study Island and I will have assigned something for you guys to complete as well. All right. So as they say, nothing to it, but to do it. The first thing that we always do when we jump into a close reading is we preview our text. So as I look over this text, I'm noticing that it doesn't look like anything we've encountered in class before. We know that our genres typically are fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. This doesn't look like it fits into anything, uh, any of those in particular. The reason why I say that is because I noticed that here it says scene one. And then I notice that I have character names here. Another character here. And sometimes they're repeated. So stepping out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys understand a little bit more about what this is. What we have here is a piece of drama. Now, it's not drama-like when you get into something with one of your friends. This is more of a play. Playwright, um, a playwright, Mark Twain, would have constructed this in order for us to be able to act out the scene from this, uh, from this book. So as we read, we're going to just walk through all of the steps that we have in order to break this down, Okay. Tom Sawyer whitewashes a fence. Remember, as I said, that this is a drama. So up here, I'm going to write genre ooh, drama. If you get my hand right, it's my first time using this. Tom Sawyer whitewashes a fence. Adapted from Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Scene one. So the scene part here is going to give us all we need to know about the setting. Scene equals setting. A street in a small town about 150 years ago, Tom stands before a long, tall wooden fence with a bucket of white paint in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. So immediately we introduce to our first character, who is Tom. And from what I've read, I'm supposing I'm gonna suppose or assume that Tom is our main character because the story is called Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Alright? Tom, the whole fence, I have to whitewash this whole long fence on a Saturday. Aunt Polly, the whole fence. And don't think you can play your games or trick me somehow. I reckon that will keep you out of trouble and teach you to go to school when you should. So much like our fiction stories, drama oftentimes has a problem, a solution, and a lesson learned. Okay, we have our characters, our problem, our solution, and our lesson learned. All right? The main difference between drama and fiction, as I stated before, is that we'll have our scene, uh, our stage directions, and our characters 
broken down by by their speaking parts. So in this second, this uh, first, sorry, first line by Aunt Polly, we notice that she says, I will reckon that will keep you out of trouble and teach you to go to school when you should. So here's the problem of the story. I'm already getting better at writing. Tom skips. Ooh. Supposed to sue school. So Tom skips school. Here we have another set of stage directions. Tom slowly turns to the fence and dips the, the brush in the paint and holds it up to the fence. He glances over to the porch, but Aunt Polly has gone inside. He puts the brush back in the pail of whitewash and sits on a tree stump looking at the fence. Tom, looking sad. If only I could train someone for this work. So we know that Tom is already doing exactly what Aunt Polly t- said he, wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he shouldn't do. Which was, try to find a way out of this work. Tom hears another boy coming up the street and his face lights up. He has an idea. Let's underline that. He has an idea. Tricky old Tom. He quickly grabs a brush and begins gently dabbing paint on the rough surface. He stops and looks at the new white paint with the eye of an artist. He gives another delicate sweep of the brush as Ben Rogers comes onto the stage. Ben, pretending to be a steamboat. Tingly, ship up to back. Tingly, making wishing water sounds. Ben steers his way over to the top. Ben gives commands like a boat captain. He finally stops in front of the fence beside Tom. Tom is carefully dabbing paint onto the wood the wood planks of the fence. See here again. We can notate that we have our character, and I forgot to do it earlier on, so we'll do it here. We have our characters, Tom, Aunt Polly, and Ben. Ben nibbling an apple. Hello, old chap. You got to work, eh? Tom, why it's you, Ben? I didn't notice. Say, I'm going swimming. Don't you wish you could? Of course, you have to finish this work. Too bad. Bet you wish you could come swimming. What do you call work? Ben, surprised. Why, ain't that work? So here's a reader I take a second to stop, and I, I can make an inference. If we know that Tom is typically the kind of person that wants to play play games or trick someone, what do we think Tom will do to Ben in order to get out of this work? Well, as an experienced reader, as the experienced readers that you are, you guys should be able to understand that Tom is probably going to trick Ben into doing the work for him. He's probably going to find some way to make Ben think that painting the white, that whitewashing defense isn't work, so that Ben can do without complaining. Tom, well, maybe it is, and maybe it ain't. All I know is it suits Tom Sawyer. Ben. Oh, come on. You mean you like it? Tom, I don't see why I ought to not like it. Does a boy get a chance to whitewash a fence every day? Well, no. I guess a boy does it. Ben watches Tom as he steps back to the st- to study the fence. Tom adds a touch of paint here and a dab of paint there. Say, Tom, let me whitewash a little. Tom, looks like he will hand the brush to Ben that he changes his mind. No, no, Ben. Sorry. No, no. I reckon it won't do, Ben. You see, uh, Polly's awful particular about this fence. Not just anyone can do this careful of a job. So let's stop again. And we see that Tom... Is trying to create the illusion that Ben wouldn't be able to do it. So he's trying to almost use reverse psychology on him, right? Ben's ob- ben, ben obviously doesn't want to do this, or nobody would want to do it. Nobody wants to sit in the sun while you could have been uh, swimming at the lake. But Tom is trying to make Ben feel like he's missing out on something. And because of that, 
He's starting to hook bed in. Also, we have the word particular underlined in our sentence. We know that if a word is underlined, that it's probably going to be a vocabulary question about it. So we might as well use our context clues to figure it out. You see, Aunt Polly's awful, awful particular about this fence. Not just anyone can do this careful of a job. So if we know that they have to be careful with the job that they're doing, we can use our context and define particular as being exact. Ben, I'd like to, Tom. I'd be careful, too. Honest, I would. Say, I'll give you the core of my apple. Poor old Ben. He's getting tricked right into it. He's even giving Tom an apple in order to paint. Tom, well, here. No, no, I just can't, Ben. Aunt Polly wouldn't like it. Ben holds out the rest of his apple. I'll give you all of it. Tom. Okay, but you take care. I'll stand off here in the shade. He really did it. Tom really did it. He tricked poor old Ben into thinking that the apple was going to, into thinking that whitewashing the fence would be an easy task. Tom sits on a tree stump eating his apple. Billy Fisher comes up the street as Ben paints. Tom and Billy put their heads together talking. We see Billy offer Tom a roll of string and 12 marbles. Tom nods his head, and Ben hands Billy the paintbrush. Billy and Ben take turns painting. So not only does Tom get Ben involved, he also ropes Billy Fisher, another character, into it. And he also gets a rope of string, a roll of string, sorry, and 12 whole marbles out of it. That Tom is a slick one. Tom. You take it easy there, Billy. Whitewashing the fence is a delicate matter. Johnny Miller comes up the street and watches Billy paint. Johnny offers Tom a pocket knife and begins to and Johnny begins to paint. Ben, Billy, and Johnny take turns with the brush until the fence is completely white. So now we see another character has entered the story. And again, Tom manages to get ooh, Sorry about that. We see that Tom manages to get a pocket knife out of that. Ben, Billy, and Johnny take turns with the brush until the fence is completely white. So, like Aunt Polly said, that, pet, that fence better be white. Little did she know she wouldn't trick her. She would trick he would, he wouldn't trick her. He would trick three other little boys into painting the fence for him. Tom looks up and down the fence with his hands on his hips. Looks dandy, boys. The three boys covered in white paint and smile and walk back up the street. They slap each other on the back and talk about how much fun they had. Tom looks out at the audience. Thing about work is, if somebody makes you do it, it's hard work. If a body wants to do something, though, it ain't like work at all. So remember, with whenever we have a problem for our story, we also have a solution. The problem was that Tom skipped school, and he had to pay. Let's add that. It has. And what was our solution? Tom tricks boys into painting. <laughs> and our lesson learned, our LL, comes in down here. If a body wants to do something, though, it ain't like work at all. 
So let's go down. Because we finished reading the story and answered the questions. At the beginning of the play, this, the section titled Scene 1 gives the reader A, information about the setting of the main character, B, an idea of how many actors are in the play, C, a prediction about how the story will end, D, the theme and lesson of the play. Well, let's read where it says Scene 1. A street in a small town about 150 years ago, Tom stands before a long, tall wooden fence with a bucket of white paint in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. So we know that it doesn't tell us how many actors are in the play because it only tells us about Tom. It gives us no indication to what the problem, solution, or lesson learned of the story are, so it's not a prediction of the end. And as I said, there's no lesson learned or no theme, so we know that we only get information about the setting and the main character. Which feature of the selection helps the reader understand that this is a dramatic fiction? Rhyming versus imagery and meter. Well, we know rhyming verses and imagery and meter are typically part of the genre of poetry. So that wouldn't really help us here in a drama. A plot with a problem that is solved by the main character. While this is true, we also discussed that fiction and debt and drama have very similar uh thinking jobs. Because they have similar thinking jobs, we know that this isn't indicative of it being just a just a drama. So we put a question mark next to it for now. Stage directions, dialogue, and props. We do get our stage directions, and that's something that's exclusive to drama. So we put a question mark next to that for now. Magical characters in a fantastic setting. We don't have any magic happening. Even though we could say Tom definitely used a little trickery to fool his uh his friends. So a plot with the problem that is solved by the main character, because that is not exclusive to drama, we can cross that out and we can circle H. Stage directions, dialogue, and props. Read this di dictionary entry. Particular, adjective. Exceptional or special. Unusual, out of the ordinary. In a specific place or time. Careful, concerned about quality. Which definition of particular is used in the dictionary? Sorry, let me get rid of this stray mark. So the best way to figure out that definition is to substitute it. You see, Aunt Polly's awful, exceptional, or special about this fence. That doesn't make much sense, so we can cross out answer choice A. You see, Aunt Polly's awful, unusual, out of the ordinary about this fence. A person can't be unusual, out of the ordinary about something. They can, it's an adjective. We can be unusual, out of the ordinary as a person, but you can't be unusual, out of the ordinary about something else. So we'll cross that definition out. You see, Aunt Polly's awful in a specific place or time about this fence. While Tom does have a time restraint for getting that fence completed, it doesn't fit into our overall sentence. So we can cross that idea out as well, that definition out as well. Aunt Polly, you see Aunt Polly's awful, careful, concerned about quality about this fence. Yeah. It makes perfect sense because Aunt Polly says he has to whitewash the whole fence in order to, in order to it, sorry, to serve as his punishment for skipping school. Look at these lines from the dialogue of the selection. Take a leg, ship up to back. Take a leg, ship up. 
sorry, take a leg a leg. The reader can tell F, Ben is ringing a real bell. G, Tom is distracted from his painting. H, Ben knows how to pilot a real steamboat. J, Ben is imitating the sounds of a steamboat. Well, if we look up back to where that sentence occurs, pretending to be a steamboat, Ben pretending to be a steamboat, we know that if he's pretending, he's definitely not ringing a real bell. While it does distract Tom, and that doesn't, this doesn't give us any uh, indication. That particular sentence, sorry, doesn't give us any indication that Tom is being distracted. Just because he imitates a steamboat doesn't mean he knows how to pilot a real steamboat either. Remember, he's just a kid. J, Ben is imitating the sound of a steamboat. Yeah, because Ben is pretending to be a steamboat. That fits perfectly. Why is it important to the story that Ben pretends to be a steamboat? A, it shows that Ben is enjoying his Saturday while Tom was working. B, steamboats were an important type of transportation in the past. C, Ben's interest in steamboats helps the boys finish the painting. D, Ben's steamboat, steamboat noises makes Tom angry. We can start from the bottom. We know that the story doesn't say anything about Tom being angry about the steamboat, nose, steamboat noises. So we can cross that idea out. C, Ben's interest in steamboats helps the boys finish the painting, painting the fence. No, there's no mention of the steamboats after that point. B, steamboats were an important type of transportation in the past. While that may be true, that doesn't really help our story in any way. It shows that Ben is enjoying his Saturday while Tom was working. That fits perfectly. Which line from the text best explains the theme of this play? Well, because of our stopping jots, we know that our lesson learned is if a body wants to do something, though, it ain't like work at all. We have all of these options. Of course, you have to finish work. Doesn't really give us a theme. I have to whitewash this whole law offense on the Saturday. That's a character line. Doesn't really give us a theme either. Whitewashing the fence is delicate matter is a delicate matter. While that is true, it's not the overall theme. That's not what we learned throughout this throughout the uh the story. If a body wants to do something, it ain't like work at all. Our lesson learned that we highlighted earlier on. How will Aunt Polly most likely react when she sees the entire fence has been whitewashed? She will be angry that Tommy is all the paint. That doesn't make much sense. She said he had to make sure that the paint, was, the whole fence was painted. She'll be surprised and proud that the work has been finished. Put a question mark next to that. She'll be frustrated with Tom for finishing the task. No. She gave him something to do. She would have expected him to finish it. She'll feel sorry that she gave Tom so much work to do on a Saturday. I don't think she'd feel sorry because he got it done. Yeah, I think she'd more likely be surprised that he finished it because it's a whole fence and he was complaining about doing it earlier. When Tom pretends to enjoy whitewashing the fence, Ben F decides to go swimming. We know that isn't true. Because he gets interested by Tom being so uh being so engulfed in his work. Is angry with Tom? Nothing in the text says that to us about him being angry with Tom. Because interested in helping paint the fence. Question mark for now. Pretends to be surprised. I don't think he's actually pretending to be surprised that he's enjoying it. I think he's genuinely surprised. Because if we scroll back up and look, he says, 
so it says right here, Ben, surprise. That stage direction lets us know. The stage direction right here lets us know that he's genuinely surprised. So we can cross that out. The circle H is our answer. Read this line from the play, number nine. I reckon that will keep you out of trouble and teach you to go to school when you should. What does this suggest about Aunt Polly? A, Aunt Polly is a careful painter. Though that line doesn't tell me anything about her being a, paint, a careful painter. We have to look for that exact point. B, Aunt Polly tries to find a way to improve Todd's behavior. Yeah. She gives him a consequence for not, be, not going to school when he should. But for now, let's put a question mark because we're not 100% sure. Aunt Polly is pleased by Todd's behavior at school. False. She's disappointed that he doesn't go to school where he should. Aunt Polly does not like Todd. Nothing in our sentence says that, sorry, nothing in this line from the play says that she doesn't like him. She actually wants him to do better. We know if somebody wants us to do better, typically they'd like and love us. So we can circle B as our answer. What is the best summary of this story? Now, remember with summaries, we have to have our important details and facts with the beginning, middle, and end of our story. Tom has to F. Tom has to whitewash a fence while his friends play on a Saturday. Tom doesn't like to work hard. He's upset about having to work. That doesn't really give us details for the, the middle and end of the story, so we can cross that out. Tom is whitewashing a fence, and his friends decide to help. They traded apples, some string, and a pocket knife. When they finish, they are pleased with their work. While this does give us our beginning, our middle, and our end, it doesn't really have any of our lesson learned, our lesson that we learned. So we put a question mark for now. Tom has to whitewash a fence as punishment. He tricks his friends into thinking that painting is fun and they finish the work, they finish Tom's work for him. That sounds like another good idea. And it has all our details. And it also has our lesson learned. So we'll put a question mark next to it for now. Tom behaves badly and his aunt Polly punishes him by giving him a difficult chore. Tom and his friends work a long time to finish painting a fence. While this does have all of our details, we're looking for our best summary. And this doesn't have, sorry, while this has our, less, our lesson learned, it doesn't have all of our details. Therefore, it can't be our best summary. So we're stuck between G and H. G includes unnecessary details. The apple, the string, and the pocket knife, unnecessary details in our summary. We need our summaries to be short and succinct. They need to be straight and to the point. Okay? That's why we're going to eliminate answer choice G and circle H is our best option. All right? So that concludes us answering the questions for our story, Tom Sawyer Whitewashes a Fence. This is just an example I'm going to upload an assignment in Study Island that you guys can complete, which will be another uh, a similar close reading text. And I indulge you guys, I, I encourage you guys to take the same steps that I did with solving this, breaking down the text, um, and jumping into the questions, making sure that you're finding your evidence in your text and get your reason behind each of the questions. All right? If you guys have any questions, you can definitely contact me through Class Dojo um, and via email as well. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys again soon.